We're gonna get real messy on this one. What's up everybody, my name is Evan Knocker. We are back yet again in the home studio, the garage. Today we're gonna to be doing something that I'm pretty well known for and I get requested all the time. I want a full length tutorial, I wanna see how you set up, see how you do it, and it's those explosion shots that I do, whether it's the powder explosions, the texture explosion, the ingredient ex explosions, what have you, whatever I can actually smack and make this crazy chaotic mess, but then it kind of comes out looking pretty cool. That's what we're gonna be doing today. Now, I'll go step by step and show you exactly how I set it up, my settings, everything you need to know, so hopefully when it comes time for it and you wanna try this out for yourself, you'll be able to knock this out of the park. I already went ahead and set up some of the basic components that are needed to make this shot happen, so I'll walk you through that right now. So for today's shot, we're gonna be using a can of Red Bull. Why Red Bull? No reason. They're not sponsoring this, they didn't ask me to do it, I just had a can of Red Bull laying around. I was like, what product do I have that kind of makes sense for this to happen? Red Bull gives you energy, actually it gives you wings, but that'll make sense. We can do the powder explosion with that. Underneath it, I'm using a board by V-Flat. Now, I typically use a surface that's a solid color, but today I decided to add a little bit more of a dimension to it, having a little bit of that texture. The main reason I chose to use this surface opposed to maybe a seamless or paper background that I've done before is because I know we're gonna have multiple attempts and I wanna make sure that this surface stays fairly clean. And when I have paper, it's hard to clean that off. So since this is plastic, I'll be able to clean off much easier than I would if I was using paper or some other maybe like uh, textured material or something like that. But I can wet it down, wipe it off, and start over if I need to. And you might be asking yourself, what do I have this set up on? They're just two folding chairs. Um, I've used these in the past and I actually really like them because they're sturdy and they don't take up a ton of room and I can put bars through the the armchairs, it just makes it actually really easy. So it's actually a really convenient way to use just things you have lying around because, yeah, makes it easy. I also have some other seat stands already kind of set up where I think I'm gonna need them and I'm gonna put some lights on them right now. Now, I've had in the past like, I don't know, seven, eight, nine sandbags, but from every shoot that I've been doing lately, they always seem to go missing. I don't know who's taking sandbags. All right, so as you can see, I have two lights set up right now. They are both Profoto D2 500s. Now, I wish I had matching soft boxes, but I don't. Currently, I'm using the one by three soft box and also a five by one. But essentially, they're gonna do the same thing. I don't think it's gonna affect it that much since the can is fairly small. Um, if this was a bigger product or a person or something like that, you're gonna want matching soft boxes so that they can cover the same distance of the product. But since it's pretty small, I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference. But what will make a difference is I'm using a skinny rectangular softbox that's gonna match the shape of the can. So that way any of the highlights that we capture or anything like that will be more in line with the structure of the product. So in this case, the can. Next, I guess we gotta set up the camera. Today we're gonna be using the Sony a7R IV with the 24 to 70 G Master lens on it. I like the 24 to 70 because, you know, it gives you a little bit more freedom when it comes to shots like this. Now, you can use a prime lens if you really know exactly what you're going for. I've used a 40 millimeter Zeiss before. It uh, works out great, but I like the versatility, especially when we're hanging this upside down. So instead of raising it up and down too far or getting really close, I can more judge it and hopefully keep this area a little bit more safe. Here's another piece of crucial, crucial equipment to be able to use and do shots like this. Now, this is a remote. This is the transmitter. This makes it possible for me to do this by myself, but also to be able to have consistency with the shots. Now, you might not really realize it, but when you're pushing the button on your camera, it's gonna have ever so slightly these micro, micro movements. Now, maybe you're running and gunning and you're taking lifestyle photos, it's not gonna really matter that much. But when it comes to product photography, it does matter. Now, that little extra movement can either make or break a shot. 
Now, if you're doing a GIF or you're doing some type of stop motion, it's almost impossible to do it without something like this in product photography. Now, lifestyle, a lot more forgiveness. But in this, since it's such a precise movement, you're gonna wanna make sure you have one of these so your camera is sure not to move at all. All right, so what I'm noticing is that I'm getting some good light coming from the side, good light going into the bottom, but I'm not getting too much light coming in from the top of where I actually want the can to be illuminated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a little diffusion so hopefully spreads out that light and wraps it around the can a bit more. So I did something a little bit different that I don't typically do because I wasn't getting a lot of good light on top of the can for, for this shot. So what I went ahead and did was I made a, basically a cocoon of light around the can. Now this is gonna serve as my hero shot for this final image. It's gonna be, the can's gonna look the best. It's gonna just, you know, it's gonna have everything you want in a good product shot. So then when I go and do the powder splash, or the powder explosion, if you will, I'm able to take that original can photo that I had and fill in where I need it, just in case the logo gets covered, because you never know what's gonna happen with these kind of shots. Now, I've done these kind of shots before with water or powder or whatever, and we've tried to do maybe 10 or 15 of these types of shots in one day. It does not go well, because this shot in itself takes time, it takes patience. You need to have all the different pieces ready to go when you take it to post. So I don't recommend trying to just go for it in these kind of shots. You wanna make sure that they're really thought out. You have all the right pieces. It's like a good puzzle. Like you could force it and you kind of get the picture of it, but it's not really as good as it could be. So take your time with these kind of shots. Light cocoons, awesome way to light your product. So now that we have all the basics out of the way, now is the fun part. Now we get to introduce the powder. Today, the powder that I'm gonna be using is a brand that I've used for most of my shots. It's called Color Blaze Wholesale Color Powder.com. Now, the reason I use them is because I've used other powders in the, in the past and they don't give that kind of explosion that I want, the kind of smokiness, the fine, fine grain. Now, you know, I've used some other ones and it's more chunky. This seems to be the best brand. I've never used this color by them. Um, so today's gonna be a little bit different. It's a yellow, or it's a yellow. No, it's not a yellow, it's a pink. Uh, this is a pink color. And you don't need very much of this at all. So before we take our shots, I'm gonna go over all the settings and some other like finer details that I wanna mention before we do this. So we're shooting at ISO 160, F11, and the shutter speed is actually 125. Now you might be asking yourself like, why are we doing 125 when we could crank it up to 2000? Now that's a really common mistake to make when you're doing shots like this. The faster shutter speed, yes, it's gonna freeze motion quicker. However, in this scenario, we're relying on light. Light is what's gonna give us that final image. Now, these lights that I'm using, these D2s are extremely good. They have that freeze option in them that makes that light lightning quick. And so that's what's gonna freeze our motion in camera, not the shutter speed. Now, a good rule of thumb to follow is when you're shooting with strobes and doing photography like this that you wanna freeze and you have your trigger on there, turn off your trigger and see if your screen is completely black. If it's completely black, that means there's no ambient light, there's no other light leakage that's gonna get in there and mess with your final image result. All the light that is creating this image is coming from your strobes, and that's what you want, and that's the key for these really freezing motion in camera type shots. Having a decent camera that you're able to take multiple shots within a second is very, very handy in a scenario like this. Now, I'm shooting with the Sony a7R IV. It's not known for its fast photography. It's not a sports camera in general. Like if it was the A1, 30 photos in one second or something like that, it's insane. This one does 10 photos in a second. So 
it's fast, but it's not super fast. It's gonna be easier for you to capture what you want in those motions so you can set on rapid fire and boom, just keep on firing light in there. Some of the lower end lights that you might be getting, they're not gonna be able to keep up with the camera speed. So you might be doing that, but then all of a sudden you notice that some are lit, lit some are really dark. And that's because your lights can't keep up with how fast you're shooting. So main takeaway is get good lights. We need more force on that one. That looked dope. I just took, looked at them. I'm, I'm gonna take them to post, but this is they looked awesome. I might do a couple more just pops, just to see if I can get some fillers in there, but perfect. All right, so there you have it. That's how I do those types of shots. I can go over really quickly for you. First off, light cocoon. Let's make sure the lighting is really nice, nice and diffused. It wraps around your product. This is a glossy product, so I chose something a little harder to shoot. If it's something matte or a box or something like that, it's probably gonna be a little bit easier. The powder that you choose, very important. If you want it to be smoky, if you wanna be clumpy, um, I've done it with all sorts of ones. This is a brand that I use for these types of shots, but I've done it with like turmeric in the past. So it doesn't really matter that all the basics are all the same. Having decent lights and also using the softbox that matches the shape of your product is very, very helpful. Now, if you're doing something like a cardboard box or something like that, it might not matter. You don't need to get like a big square one to match it, but probably this will do, or even an Octobox. It's mainly for those glossy products that have that shine that's gonna catch the reflection. Those are the ones I'm talking about. Light is everything in these types of photos. So like I told you, the all the settings that I was using before, I wasn't cranking up the shutter speed. It's not 2,000, it's not 3,000, it's not 8,000, nothing like that. What I'm doing is I'm getting rid of all that ambient light, relying solely on the light from my strobes as the light that's gonna illuminate everything. And that way it's gonna freeze things a lot better. And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw up the final image right here so you can check it out. I'm gonna make a reel on it. I'm gonna be posting it everywhere, but this will give you a very good idea of how I do these types of shots. Like and comment, tell me what you liked about it, tell me what you didn't like about it, let me know if it helped you. If you're gonna try this, tag me on Instagram, I'd love to see it. And until next time guys, I'm Evan Naka, see you guys later, bye.